Canadians are tired of being embarrassed by a prime minister who prances around. Nice try, nice try. Oh, Justin Trudeau is seen as an absolute joke on the world stage. Our prime minister treated like a human pinata. You make it, Trudeau takes it. Eric Andrew G, Globe and Mail. Um, your party hasn't actually said what your policy towards safe injection sites will be. So you want to close this one, but will you close others? What, what, what will you do around safe injection sites across the country? I will be closing them. We will close safe, safe injection sites next to schools, playgrounds, uh, anywhere else that they endanger the public and take lives. We will defund. By the way, they're not safe injection sites. I'm sorry. I used your dishonest language. See, you just repeat the language that is fed to you by the government. Are you a CP? Are you a CP? A CP? Who are you with? Globe Mail. You're with the Globe Mail. You guys repeat the same language you get from the, the liberal, the, the radical liberal NDP activists and bureaucracies. You call them safe. How can they be safe? You think it's safe when a bullet comes flying out of one of these sites to kill a mother in Toronto? Do you think that's safe? You think it's safe to have people using crack and heroin and cocaine ne next to a playground like this? You think that's safe? It's not safe. Supervised injection sites. They're drug dens. They're drug dens. And they've made everything worse. Everywhere they've been done, they've made everything worse. And I know what you'll do now. You'll now go and call the same bureaucrats who caused the, the chaos, and you'll call them experts. The people who caused the 400% increase in drug overdose deaths in Vancouver, you're going to call them experts. They are expert at destroying communities and ending lives, but at perpetuating their own industries, because that's what they are. They are industries that want to expand, and the only way they can continue to exist is by keeping the misery going. So they're not safe. They are unsafe injection sites, they are drug dens, and we oppose them. The Supreme Court has been very clear that you, there's not, these radical bureaucrats don't have the right to open these drug dens anywhere they want. The court made it clear that there are reasonable restrictions that can be placed on them, and that includes playgrounds. So, so I'll be, I, I've told you my policy, I'm against the drug dens next to children's playgrounds, schools, other places where people who are vulnerable in the community live, we will defund them. We will not, there will not be a single taxpayer dollar of, from the Polyev government going to drug dens. Every single penny will go to treatment and recovery services to bring our loved ones home drug free. Thank you. Okay, merci. Nice try. Nice try. The Supreme Court didn't say that. See, I know what you're trying to do. The Supreme Court didn't... No, I, I'm, I, I'm giving you my answer. The Supreme Court did not say that, that, that there can be... It's okay. The Supreme Court didn't say that you can have a drug den wherever you want. It said that there are reasonable restrictions that can be placed to stop them from opening up in, place, in, in locations that endanger the community or where there is community opposition. That's what the Supreme Court actually said. Now, I know that wacko politicians and the Liberals and the NDP and their supporters in the media want to make it sound like there is a constitutional obligation that we allow these drug dens anywhere they want to go up. That is not true. That is the opposite of true. We have the power under Section 56.1 of the Controlled Substance, Drugs and Substances Act to reject these these drug dens and shut them down where they endanger the public and that's what I will do. Housing costs have doubled with the worst housing inflation by far in the G7. The worst housing inflation in Canadian history. Incomes have fallen 40 percent short of housing costs increases. Rent has doubled. Mortgage payments have doubled. The needed down payment has doubled. Here in Montreal, rent has actually tripled. When I was housing minister nine years ago, you know how much it cost to rent a one bedroom here? 700 bucks. Now it's $2,200 in just nine years. The Munch people of Montreal have given Justin Trudeau their trust. What did he give them in return? He tripled their rent. He sent people to the 
Food bank. 25% of Canadians are now living in poverty. A, four, a quarter of kids are going to school hungry, according to the federal government's own data. We have the worst economy in the G7 by far. It has shrunk more since 2019 than any other G7 country. In fact, our per capita GDP is now smaller than it was before COVID. We are one of the only countries in the world that has that distinction. Our money is leaving. A half trillion dollars of our investment has left to the United States to escape Trudeau's taxes uh, and red tape. Meanwhile, we have the second slowest building permits in the OECD, which is driving up home building costs. What does Trudeau do about that? He gives more and more of our money to incompetent, radical NDP liberal mayors who block home building and drive up homelessness. Everywhere we go in Canada, it's the same story. 35 homeless encampments in Halifax, 256 homeless encampments in Toronto. 50 of them have opened in three months alone. Some people are even calling these homeless encampments Trudeau towns to reflect the fact that we never had these places before him. And here at this beautiful school, we're seeing children terrorized by drugs, by potential violence, by gross sex acts, by needles and other danger. What we're seeing here is a radical, wacko liberalization experiment of drug legalization that has driven up overdose deaths and crime and now threatens once safe neighborhoods. Despite the failed experiment that's destroying lives, Trudeau is doubling down by allowing the Benoit Lab drug injection site in Montreal located just steps away from this elementary school and this park which is supposed to be safe for children. Parents have raised the alarm bell about this disaster, saying their children are afraid to go to school. Some kids have even witnessed indecent acts on the sidewalk and have been shouted at. Residents warn of an influx of drug dealers who have been drawn into the area since the site opened. Montrealers no longer recognize the once safe communities that they used to live in. Now they see homelessness, crime, chaos, drug abuse, which have become com uh, common. Montreal's NDP Liberal Mayor has even insisted Montrealers should just learn to live with this chaos and this danger. She says we should just accept homelessness and the Trudeau government refuses to re directly reject Montreal's, the, the city of Montreal's radical request to legalize hard drugs in this city even after the experiment led to a 400 percent increase in overdose deaths in BC where it was tried and just this week the London Telegraph a famous international publication called Vancouver the world's capital of fentanyl overdoses the whole world is looking in disbelief on the wacko liberalization of drugs that is destroying lives under Justin Trudeau after nine years and so I am here today to stand up for this community because none of the liberal MPs in the area are willing to do it. Mark Miller is supposed to be the MP here. What is he doing? He's nowhere. He's doing nothing. Just like Anthony Housefather is nowhere and doing nothing to protect the Jewish people against the rampant anti-Semitism that has unleashed on the streets of Montreal and across Canada and Housefather is protecting this recent radical that they appointed to head up the Human Rights Tribunal. South Father votes to give money to UNRWA terrorists and he stands by Trudeau who's the most anti-Israel Prime Minister in Canadian history. The Montreal Liberal MPs do nothing for their community so I am here to fight for Montrealers in this wonderful city. And I'm today calling for the Trudeau government to close its drug den. Under Section 56.1 of the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the government has the power to accept or refuse a supervised consumption site like Maison Benoit Lab. Justin Trudeau must immediately shut down this hard drug injection site, this drug den, to protect our children, reassure families, and ensure the safety of all 
Quebecers and Canadians. It's time for a common sense Conservative government that will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Let's bring it home.